like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 31 says, a clothing company has budgeted $58,000 for the purchase of seven sewing machines. Wow, those are some expensive sewing machines. The seven sewing machines are to be chosen from two models, Model X and Model Y. If a Model X sewing machine costs $8,000 and a Model Y sewing machine costs $9,000, how many Model X sewing machines should the company purchase to use exactly the budgeted money? So this is a classic system of equations problem where you're going to write two equations and try to solve the system, meaning you're going to try to find, typically you would find both the value of both variables x and y, but in this problem we only need to find x. So first let's define our variables. We'll say let x be, um, let's let x represent the number of model x, it's nice and convenient there, uh, sewing machines, and we'll let y be the number of model y sewing machines. So what we're going to do is we're going to write two equations, like I said before, and a lot of times these system of equations problems are going to be worded very similarly, where you'll write one equation to represent sort of the to total number of objects, and the second equation will uh, uh, reference the total cost of buying everything that uh, you want to buy. So the first equation, this is going to reference the number, the, oh, I'll say the total number of objects, in this case sewing machines, okay, but you can use this format to solve similar problems. And then the second equation will be the total cost for all objects. Again, objects here, I'm just using that as a general term. This specific problem is talking about sewing machines. Okay, so each one of these, I, um, each one of these uh, statements is going to have its own equation. For the total number of sewing machines, we know that we have a total of seven sewing machines. And since x represents the number of uh, Model X sewing machines and Y represents the number of Model Y sewing machines, we can say that X plus Y has got to be seven, right? The number of X's plus the number of Y's should be a total of seven. Our second equation has to do with the total cost. And since X and Y, those, those variables are, are determined, okay, we don't want to change what X and Y represents here. Um, but instead, Let's, uh, let's write an equation in terms of X and Y. So um, for the total cost, we know that the Model X sewing machine costs $8,000 and the Model Y costs $9,000. So we're going to multiply the cost per sewing machine by the number of sewing machines we're buying. So if each Model X sewing machine is $8,000, for the total price, we're going to multiply X times $8,000. Now for uh, the Model Y sewing machines, each one of those is $9,000, so we'll multiply 9,000 by Y, and the total cost should be exactly $58,000 as specified by the problem. So these are going to be our two equations here, and what we need to do is find a solution to this system, meaning we need to find a X and Y value that satisfies both of these um, equations simultaneously. Now luckily, like I was mentioning before, we don't have to actually find Y. We're only interested in how many Model X sewing machines, although that's kind of the hard part. You know, once you figure out how many X sewing machines there are, you can find out how many Y sewing machines uh, there are by just subtracting from seven. So that's it's sort of trivial to, to finish it off. But anyway, um, there are several methods for solving systems of equations. Um, if you'd like to learn more about solving systems of equations, just, you know, go, go to Google or YouTube and type in methods for solving systems of equations, and you'll find a lot like substitution, elimination, you can solve by graphing or using matrices. There's, there's a plethora of methods. The method I'm going to use um, to showcase this problem is going to be substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this first equation so that, in, uh, so that I have the y variable isolated and use whatever expression I get for that uh, to substitute in for y in the second equation. So let's start with that first equation, that x plus y equals 7. 
And if I want to isolate y here so that I can substitute it into the next equation, I need to subtract x from both sides of this equation. And if I do that, I end up with y equals 7 minus x. Okay, now this expression here, this 7 minus x equals y for the whole system. So I can use this and replace the y in the second equation, replace or usually say substitute, the y in the second equation. So basically I'm going to copy this entire equation but replace y with this. And that way I'll just have a single equation with a single variable. Okay, so here's that equation written out. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this and replace only what I need to. So the y here is 7 minus x. Make sure you put those in parentheses because we're replacing the variable with the entire expression. If you forget to do that, what, you, what will end up happening is you'll multiply the 9,000 by 7, but you'll forget to multiply the 9,000 by x as well. So definitely make sure whenever you make a substitution that you put that in parentheses. Now we just have a linear equation that we can solve using um, the distributive property, combining like terms, and our properties of equality. So the first step when solving a multi-step linear equation is, if necessary, and in this case it is necessary, is to use the distributive property. Here I'm going to distribute 9,000 to 7, and I'm also going to distribute 9,000 to x. And when I say distribute, what I really mean is multiply. So I'm going to multiply the 9,000 by each term in this expression, right? Up here I have 9,000 times y, so I need to multiply 9,000 times this uh, binomial. And the distributive property is just basically the rules that we use to do that. So I'm going to use a calculator here, okay? Now make sure you're using, and while you're practicing, you're using a scientific calculator, not a graphing calculator. Uh, you're not going to be able to use a graphing calculator on the on the CLEP test, it will need to only be scientific. So just, uh, you know, you want to get in the habit of just using that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 9,000 times 7. Even though the arithmetic's not too bad there, you know, I highly recommend just using the calculator to do any and all arithmetic, just so that you can avoid any errors that might arise by just being kind of sloppy with the arithmetic. Okay, so I needed to multiply 9,000 by 7, but I also need to multiply 9,000 by negative x. So this will be minus 9,000 uh, x. After using the distributive property, we want to combine like terms. And we have two like terms over here on the left-hand side of the equation. 8,000 x minus 9,000 x. If you're not sure what 8,000 minus 9,000 is, again, put it in the calculator. Uh, this one I've got, feel, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on. It's going to be negative 1,000. So negative 1,000x plus 63,000 equals 58,000. Now I've got this down to a two-step linear equation. Uh, the first step is going to be to subtract 63,000 from both sides. Nope. Um, and this is another case where, yeah, I'm going to use a calculator to do this. Um, I'm going to, you know, now that I've subtracted 63,000, it's going to cancel out on the left-hand side, which is really what I want to happen. Uh, that's kind of the whole point of subtracting it for the first place. Is we want to get rid of that. We're trying to isolate x here, so we want to try to get rid of everything else on that side of the equation. Uh, but on the right-hand side, we've got 58,000 minus 63,000. Again, not terrible, terribly hard arithmetic there, but save yourself the trouble and just use a calculator. The last step here is going to be to, to divide both sides by negative 1,000. So I'm going to divide both of these sides by negative 1,000, and that's going to give me my final answer here. Uh, negative 5,000 divided by negative 1,000. Here's a case where I, I think I, I, I know the answer here, um, but don't be afraid to use a calculator if you're not sure, or even if you have just a hint of doubt, um, but we should get 5. Now normally when you solve a system of equations, you have to go back and find y also, but this is just strictly asking for the number of Model X sewing machines. So we have our solution here. It's going to be 5. Our answer is D. 
there is another way you could solve this out um, before I let you go here. You know, the, the two, you know, you're only buying seven sewing machines. So there's only so many different combinations of X and Y that you could even go here. Um, because we're talking about whole sewing machines, we're not going to consider decimals or anything. So if you just look at your answer choices, two, three, four, five, six, as long as you get these equations set up, uh, you're, you're, you know, you might, if you, you know, if you get lost in the algebra here, you can really just pick these numbers and just plug them in. You know, if, if X is going to be two, then Y has got to be five, right? So just try 8,000 times two plus 9,000 times five, and you're going to see that doesn't work. And you could do that for each one of these answer choices. And that way you don't have to go through the algebra. Um, so that will work if you, once you get to choice D and you plug in five for X and you have five plus two, obviously that equals seven. And if you plug in five here and two here, uh, multiply by 8,000, 9,000 respectively, add those together, you should get 58,000. So just know that there is sort of a, you know, cheat way to get through this. Um, you know, I don't want to say cheat, but you can work backwards using the answer choices that are given to you. Uh, so yeah, that's it for number 31. Uh, thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.